Hello, today I'll be discussing lab 4 titled Oscillations. The purpose of this experiment is to observe, model, and analyze the motion of a mass oscillating on a spring using both Newton's second law and the energy principle. Where Newton's second law is defined as the net force over mass is equal to the change in velocity over change in time, where in this experiment the only forces we assume are acting on our object are the force of gravity and the spring force given by these formula where g is a gravitational constant 9.81, specific for the Earth, in the case of spring constant, s is the displacement of the spring from its equilibrium length in this mass. The energy principle gives us that the change in energy of a system is equivalent to the summation of its kinetic and potential energies interior to the system, which is also equivalent to the work done by the surroundings. In this lab, we have the system being the mass, the spring, and the Earth, giving us delta E is equal to uh, change in kinetic energy, plus change in potential gravitational energy, plus change in spring, in uh, the spring initial energy, where the formulas for all of these are down here, is equal to the work done by the surroundings, which we have equal to zero because of what we define as the system. Uh, with this definition of the system, there's no surroundings or to be agents of, of an external workforce. For observations, I use the app tracker to analyze the mass spring system. Here I have the attachment point of the spring set to the origin. This is the negative y direction, this is the negative x direction. The initial position of the weight we have a little bit further up on the y axis and um, uh, considerably further in the negative x direction. So I just tracked the center of mass of the object throughout the motion. One last thing to point out, we get the period from doing either the change of time from crest to crest or from trough to trough of either the x or y data set. And before I move on, I'd like to discuss further about the oscillation period. So using those graphs, I calculated the um, an estimate for the period with a higher estimate for the x. I also um, calculated the range in the data sets and noticed that x was also considerably larger. So with this I can conclude that um, we get a, a larger estimate for periods because of the larger range. And the larger range in motion in the x direction is because of the starting location we chose. So if we change the starting location, these estimates will be different depending on. Um, before doing the model, I'll just go over some quick initial conditions and um, constants. So here we have the mass equals 0 0.42 kilograms. Spring constants I calculate from the period formula, as you can see here. I rearranged it and calculated K. We get 6.83 newtons over meters. With this newfound K, I can then calculate L naught, which is the uh, equilibrium length of the spring. And to do this, I considered when um, F net is equal to zero, so the f uh, force of gravity is equal to the spring force, and I can calculate it that way. And here I just have the update velocity and update position formulas, where it's important to note that I estimate average velocity to be final velocity here because the force is not constant. All right, for time's sake, I won't go over too many details with the code, but here we have a calculation loop we initially set uh, the initial energies to be what they were in the last loop. And then uh, we update the forces to get the net force. We update the velocity position, L, and then we recalculate the energies to calculate change in energy to get the plot for our code, which you'll see momentarily. All right, running the code. Big thing to note, the blue ball is uh, the model's position. The red is the position I got from Tracker. So big thing to note here is that they follow the same kind of pattern of motion with overestimates in the model at several locations, which is mostly uh, because of the assumptions we made at the beginning. We didn't cons uh, include drag force into the net force. Uh, which means we also didn't consider it as an agent to do uh, works to our system externally, which also could uh, 
be why uh, our position data is a little bit off compared to the experimental data. So if we want to improve our model, we have to include, uh, include those forces. And now, to wrap things up, I'll consider uh, whether or not the energy principle was satisfied in our model. To do this, if we have the formula delta E, which sums to zero, and uh, on our graph we see this orange line, delta E, also sums to zero, which uh, shows that the energy principle is satisfied. Um, also important to note, that means, also means that these changes in energies that we sum to get to delta E also cancel out at each point. The graph. And with that, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.